Hello everybody, this is All Washington. This is part four of the, the Rent series. Part four of the Rent series entitled Communication. Last time I left off, I was telling, still telling about the, um, the obstacles that, that prevents effective communication. The, uh, and I was telling about, you know, uh, the fear of rejection. I was telling, telling about, you know, unresolved past experiences. And the last part I left out was talking about, you know, denying the conflict altogether and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'll just give you examples how a person would deny the conflict. I'll use the examples about, you know, um, a wife um, having an issue with, with their um, with, with husband about uh, um, the purchase of a boat. And stuff like that. That's on the last rant. I'm not going to go into detail about that again because it took a lot. So um, moving on further and stuff. Um, uh, there, there's another one um, area within, you know, the denying conflict and stuff. Um, let me also reemphasize the the denying conflict. What I'm talking about and stuff. Um, when you den well, well, when I'm saying denying conflict, I'm saying that you deny it all together. You just, you know, just feel like you just not going to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You feel that. You you don't want to deal with it. You don't feel like communicate. We're just gonna let the person do whatever they want to do, uh, even though in your heart you're feeling hurt and torn about it and stuff. That's called denying the conflict altogether. You know what I'm saying? So um, going deeper to this and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, I'm, there there are some things that I'm, I want to let the person uh, who who experienced this and stuff. Um, there are certain. Uh, things that you can um, you'll know even for yourself, or you probably see your significant other do this uh, when they did not conflict. Here are some signs that you know that your significant other is hurting because it's a lack of communication that that's happening right now between you know whatever situation. Uh, the first the first thing I want to um, uh, talk about that that's that's a telltale sign about. Uh, the person who's denying the conflict, they just having a bottle up inside. They don't want to um, you know talk about it and you know stuff like that it's um is this you know they they rather uh is instead of rally dealing rather directly dealing with the um dealing with their emotions um they'll they'll end up on turning to things you know turn to you know things that call like substitutes and stuff in other words it's like a placebo effect you know what i'm saying they want to um deal with the placebo thing you said what what makes them feel good so to keep them from uh, you know dealing with this certain conflict that's going on with them uh what they do they'll turn to things you know like overeating you know what i'm saying they'll they'll just overeat a whole lot and stuff you know what i'm saying they'll just be eating 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 you know what i'm saying and they don't know why they eat but they they know, but uh, subconsciously and stuff, they didn't diffuse the reason why they're doing it. But they know the reason why is because it's a type of hidden conflict that they're dealing with. You know what I'm saying something that that they're dealing with in the relationship. There's there's it's no communication there that they try to express their concern. They feel helpless. They feel you know rejected. They feel uh, you know the situation unresolved. So you know they go turn to things like overeat them. Eating, I'm sorry. Uh, you know they have like a bored mentality. Is y'all y'all know what I'm talking about about bored mentality, right? A relationship. I'm pretty sure a lot of either women or men, but it's it's really notorious with women and stuff. And I'm talking about y'all fellas, so y'all should pay attention to this. Now, when I'm talking about the boredom part, have you ever just um you know walk into the house with your girlfriend or your wife or you know some significant other, and you just ask them how you doing? Uh, Oh, what you doing? Nothing. So, so how was your day? Okay. So you didn't do nothing good today? No. And notice everything. I know it's a little funny, but notice everything I'm doing is that everything that they do is stuff right on. Every single thing that they do, they have like a whatever, have like a whatever bored mentality. And so like it doesn't, whatever you send to it, it doesn't concern them. They just don't care. And stuff. And that's what I'm talking about. Uh, that, that's a, that's a, another telltale sign about that. You know what I'm saying? Then another sign is a big sign is depression. Where you where you see a person who's not taking care of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they feel like they you know they feel like they inadequate. You know what I'm saying? They want to communicate. They try to communicate. They try their very best to communicate. They feel like nobody's not understanding what they're saying whatsoever, and they become into this woe is me mentality, and they feels help. They feel helpless 
And so, right, so they draws, he draws them into a depression. And so, where they just totally just shut down all together. And so, you know what I'm saying? Then, within the shutdown, it creates physical illness as well. And that's another telltale sign, a lack of communication. It creates, um, you know, it creates, a, you know, uh, overeating or eating disorder. The person becomes bored in a relationship. They become depressed in a the relationship. Then, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, they, um, becomes physically ill. They just sick for no apparent reason. They just sick all the time. They catch a cold and they sick and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? And so, and so these these things, you know. Um, oh, sorry. One last thing. And this thing is really notorious with women and stuff too. Is gossiping and stuff. Yes, I said it. Gossiping. Um, now, when, when you notice that the person's gossiping all the time, so you know what I'm saying? They have a whole lot of unresolved issues and stuff that they're dealing with. And they're trying to, um, as we, you know, as people call it, vent. You know, they're trying to vent it out. Since they can't vent it out to the person who they have the lack of communication to, since this person's not listening to them, they, they need to vent it out somewhere else. So they go to other sources. You know, they go to their, you know, their homeboy, homegirl, whatever, stuff like that. You know, they go on the social media, vent it out, whatever, stuff like that. They go to venting, start venting out, you know, their business, putting their business down on the street. So because they need to release it, they need to get it out. And so because your mind, their mind is telling them that it's un un unhealthy for you to feel the way that you're feeling and you need to get it out. But also, you you feel they feel defeated because they they want to get it out, but the person does not listen to it. They does not communicate it uh, to them at all, so so they don't know what to do other than that and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, just like I say, them them are the um, signs that you need to watch out for 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 a person who's who's in a denying mindset, who's in who's denying the conflict together. Once again, I say a person, you know what I'm saying, who's overeating, a person who feels bored in a relationship, a person who's depressed, and, you know, a person who's uh, physically ill and last one, a person who gossips all the time, like unhealthy gossip all the time, you know what I'm saying? Now, another one, another one, obstacle that I want to um, um, bring to your attention about uh, that that uh, that prevents effective communication is passive aggressiveness. Yes, I said it. Passive aggressiveness. In other words, it's um it's basically expressing anger at someone indirectly rather than directly. Once again, it's expressing your anger at someone indirectly instead of directly. So, how in the world? Can you express your um, your anger indirectly instead of directly? I'm going to give you all an example of this. You know what I'm saying? And this is with men and women. Both men and women does this. One of the examples of this is uh, nagging. Yes, nagging. Uh, if you notice that the person, your, your significant other, they just finding some, something to, to try to nag about and stuff, there are some, there's an unresolved issue that need to be addressed by them. You know what I'm saying? That they feel it haven't been addressed. So they so what they do, they find things to try to nitpick about. It. They'll they'll nag about it. You know what I'm saying? They'll nag and they'll nitpick about it. Then also what they do, uh, they'll nag, they'll nitpick about it. Another thing they do, they'll procrastinate. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And they have a negative mindset. They have, in other words, a negative mentality about whatever it is that you talk about. You can talk about going to the restroom, and they'll have a negative mentality about going to the restroom. You like, uh, you you could like, for example, be like, man, I got to use the restroom. Then the person will say, well, you should have went to the store and bought you some toilet paper. What? Toilet paper? What are you talking about? I just need to go to, I, I just said I need to go to the restroom. And I'm telling you, you need to go buy some toilet paper. You never don't buy, buy no groceries in the house. Like, what? Like, what where is this coming from? What, what are you talking about? And stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about going to the restroom, you know, taking the dome, whatever. And stuff, you you went from zero to 100 about this, you know what I'm saying? But I'm using this example is uh, just like I say, that's, that's what I'm talking about, passive aggressiveness, in other words, you know what I'm saying? Then, then um, another one, another thing that well, what people do when, when you know uh, they, they, they have lack of communication is that they sabotage things. Now, sabotaging deals with, with something that, uh, uh, what it deals with, it occurs when a, when, when a person attempts to uh, spar or undermine some activity another person has planned. Okay, 
All right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to um pick on women, but this is another thing that a woman is notorious for doing. And I'm gonna give you an example of this. Okay. Now say for say for example, um say for example, your husband, uh your husband or your boyfriend, you know, whatever, uh comes to you say, say, um, comes to you say, Hey, hey, hey babe, I'll figure out right, go hang out with the fellas for a while. And stuff on, um, you know, I'm gonna be back in an hour. I'm gonna go hang out with the fellas. You know, we're gonna have a couple of drinks and shoot some pool, whatever stuff like that. Immediately, what the what, what the woman does is like, oh, okay. Well, how long are you gonna be? I'm just gonna be a couple, you know, just an hour. I'm just gonna, you know, chill out, hang out, and stuff like that and stuff. Then immediately after that, the woman be like, okay, have fun. Like, okay, yo, go ahead, have fun and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then, then, then the woman, then you know. Um, the husband or the boyfriend be like, okay, cool, you know what I'm saying? They happy about it. Yeah, cool, you know. Get it dressed and get it ready, getting ready to go and stuff like that. Then they say, you know, as the person get ready to walk out the door and stuff, you know what I'm saying? You like gonna get a give, you know, her a kiss and stuff like that. Okay, uh, I'll be back, you know, later and stuff like that. I'm not gonna be out too long, but I'll be back later and stuff like that. Then immediately this way, and I tell you, just about every woman does if hey. Uh, I dare y'all to come in on this right now because uh, every woman does this and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm not lying about this. Immediately right after the the one the one the one husband or the boyfriend say that and stuff. You know, like, okay, I'm leaving. I'll see you later. They say this, and I kid you not. Okay, have fun. I'm just gonna be in the house being bored with the children. Or I'm just gonna be in the house watching TV by myself. But you have fun. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's okay. Then right then and there, that person, the the one husband or the broker look like, okay, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Um, do you not want me to go? No, you can go, go ahead, go. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead, go have fun with your boys. Have have a good time with your boys, you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna do sit here. I might, you know, I might um, you know, I might just talk on the phone or watch movies, or I might even go to you know, go to sleep. I might go over, you know, my parents' house or my friend's house, whatever. Or I may not, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They don't be one chill with me anyway and stuff. But you have fun. This is an example that I'm talking about sabotaging. And so you you purposely sabotage because deep down inside. You really don't want the person, you, you really don't want your wrong husband or boyfriend to go because you 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 really don't, for, for different reasons, stuff like that, you, you you really don't want them to go for, for the simple fact because um you you may not have no friends where you could do the same thing or, you know, say be other reasons, stuff like that. It may be a repeated thing where, where, the, where you know, the boyfriend or husband does this and it makes it seem like he don't want to chill with you and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So my time is up on this um this on rent. Once again, fight favorite faith, and I'll see you for part five. Peace.